Ladies and gentlemen, that's why they are the premier band of our nation's capital. Another round of applause for the 257. Good morning, distinguished guests and service members. Welcome to the 67th Annual District of Columbia National Guard Awards and Decoration Ceremony. I am Air Force Staff Sergeant Rodolfo Morales. And I'm Army Staff Sergeant Moni Wesley. And we are honored to be your masters of ceremonies for today's event. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for prayer and a moment of silence for our fallen comrades given by Chaplain Samuel Guys, District of Columbia National Guard State Chaplain. Let's pray. Almighty Father, you raise us up beyond our human limits and bless us with wonderful gifts. Should we be on land or in the skies, at home or on duty, American soil or in a land that is foreign to us, know that you are always with us to watch over us and guide us. With gratitude in our hearts, we give thanks for all the ways you sustain us and give increase to our work. As we gather today to recognize the many accomplishments that have been achieved by members and units of the District of Columbia National Guard, may we never fail to give glory to you. With you all around us, we have no fears, for you are the light unto our feet, who guides us always forward. Heavenly Father, on this anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor, the beginning of the Second World War for our nation, we pray not only for ourselves, but commend unto your care all those who have served in our nation's military services, who have passed from this life, be served too. Bless them all with your mercy and eternal life in your kingdom, where all hurts are healed and we are made anew for life without end. We humbly make our prayer for all these things, for you live and reign forever and ever. Thank you, Chaplain Guys.
me in particular, I'm fairly new to the Air Force, so this is a training experience for me. Uh, I've gained a lot, um, a lot of valuable information. Again, uh, tech school, you only learn so much until you're actually on the job. Uh, so my superiors, my instructors here have taught me a lot of stuff about uh, just doing minimal things to, to further my career.
Ladies and gentlemen, moving into position is our reviewing party, Major General Errol R. Schwartz, and Command Sergeant Major Wayne L. Bowser. As our reviewing party, troops align, we would like to recognize the words represented in each of these formations. The Master Sergeant Adolf Scagliarini, Outstanding Band Member, is awarded to Staff Sergeant Eric Cooper of the 257th Army Band for being the most outstanding band member of 2014. The Philip M. Talbot Trophy Army recipient is the 260th Regiment Regional Training Institute and is awarded to the unit attaining the highest rate of reenlistment. The Family Rating SMBO Award is awarded to the Recruiting and Retention Battalion. This award is awarded to the unit for outstanding participation in the Family Readiness Program. The Colonel Lewis R. Williams Outstanding Personnel Award is awarded to Specialist Karen Garcia for exceptional performance in all areas of personnel. The District of Columbia Honor Guard Member of the Year is awarded to Master Sergeant James Childs and Air Force Captain Andre Slaughter for their contributions in areas of military honors, ceremonies, and training. The Master Sergeant William H. Avendrop Trophy is awarded to the 547th Transportation Company and the 113th Civil Engineer Squadron. These are the units that achieve the best overall rating at each training site. The Major General Cunningham Bryant Award is awarded to the 113th Aerospace Control Alert Detachment for the highest rating on federal inspections during this year. The Major General Paul Pogmaro Award is awarded to the 121st Fighter Squadron for demonstrating those qualities of excellence and setting benchmarks for future leaders. The Joseph Goldstein Aerial Gunnery Award is awarded to Captain Connor Brook as the tactical pilot achieving the highest average score in all phases of weapons delivery using the F-16 aircraft. The McCall Flying Safety Award is awarded to Major Todd Reiner for outstanding safety efforts in the 201st Airlift Squadron. The Howard Casey Flying Safety Award is awarded to Lieutenant Colonel Johnny Vargas as the tactical pilot with major contributions to the Flyer Safety Program. The Recruiting and Retention Rookie of the Year is awarded to Staff Sergeant Demeron McFarland for obtaining the most number of recruits in a calendar year as a junior recruiter. The District of Columbia Army National Guard Excellence in Food Service Award Philip A. Conley Award Competition is awarded to the 547th Transportation Company. The Colonel Robert L. Fleming Award is awarded to the 257th Army Band for attaining the highest percentage of enlisted attendance during the fiscal year. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving these people a round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing of the colors and the playing of the National Anthem. During the playing of the National Anthem, all present should stand when the United States flag is presented. All civilian males should remove headgear, and all civilians should place their right hand over their hearts. Those present in uniform should render the hand salute.
Brigadier General Henneman and Brigadier General Dagnon will now present the Brigadier General William E. Horton, Major General Calvin G. Franklin, the Major General Charles Southward Leadership Award, and the Military Volunteers of the Year Awards. The William E. Horton Award is presented to Army Captain Tamara S. Collinson. This award is presented to the Unit Commander of the Year for the District of Columbia Army National Guard. This year's Major General Calvin G. Franklin Leadership Award is presented to Army Major Joel Smith and Air Force Major Natasha Taylor. The Calvin G. Franklin Leadership Award was instituted to foster leadership. The Major General Charles Southward Leadership Award is presented to Army First Lieutenant Suzanne Riopel and Air Captain, Captain David Connolly. The Major General Charles Southward Leadership Award recognizes the most deserving junior officers. The Army and Air National Guard's Military Volunteer of the Year Award is presented to Army Staff Sergeant Calvin Washington, Staff Sergeant John Purser, and Air Force Technical Sergeant Nathaniel Ramos. These members have demonstrated exceptional meritorious volunteer service in their unit, community, and the District of Columbia metropolitan area. Command Sergeant Major Brooks and Chief Master Sergeant Garber will present the Soldier of the Year, Airman of the Year, Non-Commissioned Officer of the Year, Senior Non-Commissioned Officer of the Year, Recruiting and Retention Non-Commissioned Officer of the Year, and the J. Leo Lynch Outstanding Airman Awards. The Soldier of the Year is presented to Sergeant Rayshad Thompson. Accepting on his behalf is Sergeant Solomon Acevedo. And the Airman of the Year is awarded to Airman First Class Lindsey Mason. This is a soldier and airman who demonstrated outstanding performance, 100% attendance at all training assemblies, and the most qualified in their military occupational specialty and Air Force specialty code. The non-commissioned officer of the year is presented to Army Sergeant Ezekiel Alvarez and Air Force Technical Sergeant Justin Folsham. These NCOs have demonstrated overall performance of duty and unit readiness, clearly distinguishing them as the soldier and airman in his unit. The Senior Non-Commissioned Officer of the Year is presented to Army First Sergeant Justin Barrick and Air Force Senior Master Sergeant William Liston. Accepting on behalf of First Sergeant Barrick is Sergeant First Class Kenneth Clyde. These senior NCOs are receiving this award for outstanding performance. The Recruiting and Retention Non-Commissioned Officer of the Year Award is awarded to Sergeant Eduardo Cruz Sosa for obtaining the most recruits in the calendar year. The J. Leo Lynch Outstanding Airman Award is presented to Master Sergeant Yolanda Spikes, who is the most deserving airman serving as First Sergeant. Retired Colonel Taro Jones and Miss Mimi Abel, daughter of Colonel Benjamin C. Abel Jr., will now present the Tuskegee Airman Award and the Colonel Benjamin C. Abel Jr. Award. The Tuskegee Airman Award is presented to Staff Sergeant Regina Nolte. This airman is recognized for excellence in technical achievement. The Colonel Benjamin C. Abel Jr. Award is presented to Senior Master Sergeant Troy Smith. This award is presented to the member of the 201st Airlift Squadron for outstanding achievement in aircraft maintenance. Also this morning, Retired Command Sergeant Major Johnny Underwood will be giving a special gift to some of our award winners on behalf of the Geico Military Department. Let's give all of these awardees a great big round of applause.
Major General Schwartz and his wife Norma, Brigadier General Payne and his wife Carmen, Brigadier General Donnelly, Command Sergeant Major Wayne Bowser and his wife Crystal, and Chief Master Sergeant Albert Barber will now present the District of Columbia National Guard Family of the Year Awards. The Family of the Year Awards are presented to Army Sergeant First Class Daniel Meebane Jr. and his family, and Air Force Technical Sergeants Mario and Daniela Ricci. This award is for the members and their families whose support, dedication, and participation were invaluable to the District of Columbia. Let's give these people a round of applause. Major General Schwartz, Brigadier General Payne, and Brigadier General Donnelly will now present the District of Columbia National Guard Civilian Volunteers of the Year, Civilian Employee of the Year, the Worley Youth Award, and the Major General Errol R. Schwartz Youth Challenge Cadet of the Cycle Award. The Civilian Volunteer of the Year Award is presented to Ms. Davina Oswald for meritorious volunteer service in the District of Columbia metropolitan area in support of the District of Columbia National Guard. This year we have a new award to recognize the Civilian Employee of the Year. This award is presented to Mr. Derek Perry, who has demonstrated exemplary performance throughout the year for the District of Columbia National Guard. The Worley Youth Leadership Award is presented to Ms. Shayla Stringfield. This youth has exhibited outstanding service and leadership potential while representing this organization. The Major General Errol R. Schwartz Youth Challenge Award, Cadet of the Cycle, is presented to Mr. Jerry Ruby for Class 41. This year, we will honor past members who have had a blue ID card from the District of Columbia National Guard for over 30 years. These are what we want to call our longevity retirees. These awards are presented to retired Command Sergeant Major Herman Clay and retired Chief Master Sergeant James E. Harris. Receiving this award on Chief Master Sergeant Harris's behalf is Chief Master Sergeant Lou Keeler. These service members have been noted as the oldest living District of Columbia National Guard retirees. Retired Command Sergeant Major Ermin Clay served in the United States Army starting in 1943 to include 30 years of service with the District of Columbia Army National Guard from 1953 to 1983. Retired Chief Master Sergeant James B. Harris served in the United States Air Force starting in 1941 to include 25 years of service with the District of Columbia Air National Guard from 1953 to 1978. Please join us in giving these legendary retirees a round of applause. We will give 
welfare to this individual for her dedication and service to this great organization. Showing the true meaning of dedication, loyalty, and selfless service, the Longevity Civilian Employee Award is presented to Mrs. Nancy Foreman. This award is presented to the civilian.
because this is how we will do it. And if we need a bigger armory to do it, all I have to do is to say the word to Colonel Anthony Jackson, and he's going to do it. He will move the walls so that he can accommodate all of you. But here is where the past meets the present. And again, I would like to recognize all of the retirees here in the building today. Because they also stood behind me. Well, not me specifically, but my predecessor, as we felt the pain of a two and a half hour ceremony. Let me say a few words about some of our distinguished guests. Ms. Goldberg, thanks for being here. You've always been by our side, an honorary Captain Guardian. Thanks for all you do. You are our voice in the Pentagon, speaking to the Secretary of Army on our behalf. Thank you. Freddy Gonzalez, OSD, thank you so much because without our interaction, arm wrestling sometimes, I understand, these youth will not be here today because you were instrumental in getting us the money we needed to start our campus in Long Mary. Thank you very much. I'll get to my band buddies here in a minute. But if I go to the second row, Gus Hargit, engineer and retired, out of Tennessee, now the president of the National Guard Association of the U.S. Thank you so much for being here. Without your voice on the Hill, we will not be able to move forward with God. You were instrumental in making sure that the chief received his fourth star and become a member of the Joint Staff. Thank you so much. The Joint Chiefs of Staff, thank you so much. Ms. John Handy, Ms. John Schooner, Tess, thank you for being here. Brigadier General Gillespie, Thank you. Uh, I, I know uh, I volunteered you uh, to do the SGR, and you stepped up to the plate and did very well. And your beautiful wife, Gwen, who's sitting right next to you. And I'm sure you ran many opportunities with me working here in the building. Thank you so much for being here. My battle buddies, my great men, and their spouses, thank you for all you do. I could not have done this alone. All that we are seeing here happening today is because of your significant support. Thank you so much to all of the GO senior officers, senior enlisted. A special thanks goes out to uh, Major Allen. Uh, she is the person who has been cracking the whip captain, looking at her from the upper deck throughout the week as uh, she whipped the folks into shape. Uh, Command Sergeant Major Brooks is here in some place. Uh, uh, in the voice of whatever was happening, uh, a senior enlisted leader, uh, Command Sergeant Major Bowser, uh, uh, Chief Master Sergeant Coons, who has been instrumental from the air side in working through all of the uh, work here today, uh, getting to today, could not be here with us uh, this morning because he had the death of the family, but the prayers go out to, to him also. When I look at what we have done over the last 13 years, it has been significant. Our contribution to the war, beginning in 2002-2003, all of the deployments that we have uh, done uh, today, as you saw in the video, 276 is still performing duty over there. The 1946 contingency uh, 
before Calvin ends. Uh, they will be back just about next weekend and they'll be home for Christmas. And all the individuals that we have out there doing good things. But our fight is not only abroad, it's here at home. We have welcomed back the 372, we welcome back the wing, we welcome back some of our army units. But we don't have a reset time. We are not one in five. We work our duties here in the nation's capital every day. Our third and third CSC responded to the issue that spilled in West Virginia. We've done work here in the city, sitting here for the State of the Union address. We've worked the 4th of July, we've worked the concert of Valor. There are so many things, the snowstorms, anything that happens here in the nation's capital, we have worked it. I had the privilege of working very closely with the outgoing mayor. This month is his last month. But I was offered the opportunity to sit as a liaison to his cabinet and viewed as an equal on his cabinet. That ensured access to us whenever an emergency happens. That is a positive move for this agency and we look forward to working with Mary Lent beginning next month here in the nation's capital. There's so many things that you've done. There's so many things that are going on. And I would invite the retirees to visit our museum that we have built. And we have very uh, a few satellite museums in the hallways around the building that we will populate with different things so that we can continue our heritage and you can see them as you walk through the hallways of this building. This building was built in 1941. And there's so much to be done. So much that we have not done in the past that we have to do. We will have every hallway in this building, no matter what level, looking like the north side. We will replace every window in this building. We will take out the window air conditioners and install central air. We will continue to present this command as an elite command. As you enter this building, you will see on the right side coming in, a couple of years ago, we installed uh, Huey helicopter. Yes, that was taken out of our inventory in 2009. But the DC National Guard continued to fly that aircraft until 2011, until we could get a new aircraft in our inventory. That represents us as you walk into this building. We've recently installed and because as you read the sign above the doors as you come into this building, you will see it reads Joint Force Headquarters, District of Columbia NASA Car. Because we are a joint force, that means Army Air. Therefore, we have installed an F-16 on the left side as you come into the building. We will have a ribbon cutting right after the ceremony so that we will display this unit proudly to anyone who goes by. But let's not forget that the service is not only those that wear the Army uniform or the Air uniform. Let's not forget the civilians the Miss Nancy's of the world who are here to support us. As we deploy, they also deploy. 
Let's not forget the families that you leave behind as you deploy. Because as you deploy, they are energized to keep the households going. There is no force like the National Guard. The National Guard is the best value for America. Because when you take your uniform off, most of you, you go back to your civilian jobs. You go back to your communities. You demonstrate to America what we are all about. We are the backbone of the United States. We provide an unmatched support to this nation. And it's because of you, that's why the U.S. is so strong. That's why the military is so strong. That's why our communities are so strong, because of the work you do. Not only do we fight the wars overseas, not only do we protect the citizens of this great nation, but we also provide an unmatched service to the community. Let's look at the new challenge for that, being led by a candidate, where we are giving the youth in this city a second chance so that they can become productive citizens. Let's look at relationships that we are building with the University of the District of Columbia, for example, so that they have an opportunity right after graduation to enter workforce development, higher ed, or whatever their desire is. That's what the Guard does. That's why I'm so proud to be a part of all of you and be a team member in this great elite organization. As we break the holidays, let's not forget those who are serving overseas. Let's not forget those who are at home here today. Let's not forget your battle buddies and your wingmen because they may need help also even though they're home. That's why our partnerships are so valuable. Our partnership with Operation Homefront and all of all the support elements, Skyco and whoever else we are working with to build relationships. Thank you so much for all you do. Thank you so much for being here today, especially the retirees, so that we can have the past and the present. I'm not sure if my verb is here, but there's one piece that was missing. Because when I was standing there in formation, the previous commanding generals really took the line of the chief, standing on the back of the chief. I gave the task of Colonel Tom Mike Bird, but he didn't deliver. So I, I, I'll work with him on that. So thank you for being here on behalf of my family, Roma. I have the kids right there, their families, to your families, all of you, and your extended families. Have a happy holiday, have a safe holiday, and I look forward to working with you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, during the passing of the all present should stand with the United States flag is passing by. All civilian males should remove headgear and all civilians place their right hands on their hearts. Those present in uniform should render the hand salute.
Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the playing of the Air Force song and the Army song. 